All right, folks. So I want to talk to you about uh, some how to deal and cope with, you know, real life issues. And uh, I'm talking about coping and dealing with things in a constructive way, not a destructive, but a constructive way. So divorce. Divorces can be very painful, right? Both emotionally, psychologically, and financially, right? So uh, going through uh, a divorce, which is an extreme breakup, right? Uh, the way to, 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 to cope with that, right? And not just a divorce, just any kind of, you know, uh, relational breakups, right? How to cope with that constructively. And the first thing I want to put out there is this. This is the first thing I want to put out there. Understanding your state, your mental state, becoming fully conscious and aware of your mental state, that you are in a mental state of negativity. Whether you acknowledge it or not does not negate or nullify those facts. That <clears throat> in terms of energetic, your energetic... Uh, composition instead of you you are in a negative state naturally naturally doesn't matter who breaks up with who right if you're the person who leaves or if the person leaves you it really doesn't matter if you're the person who leaves for vain purposes you can get some you could say okay i left on my terms so the pressure of the the blowback is is lessened right because you left on your terms Right, you, you you have somewhat of a of some kind of control, but you still exist in a negative state because biologically there are certain chemicals, right? Uh, these are called the happy chemicals, right? And uh, the the acronyms for these chemicals is dose, D O S E, and you know dose means a certain amount of. So you were getting a certain amount of these chemicals by being in that relationship. Right, because at some point it had to be good, or or a, a, a semblance of good, a semblance of happiness, right? A, a, a piece, a portion, some point. It wasn't all bad, right? So before it got bad, at some point it had to be good. So you are naturally biologically receiving uh, several of the the DOSC, and I'm gonna tell you what those chemical the, the DOSC stands for: dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and uh, uh, endorphin. Now, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin. And, and oxytocin and dopamine and, and, you know, all these chemicals. When you're in a relationship, right, a healthy one for the most part, there's th these, these, these chemicals, right, uh, namely oxytocin, right, is being secreted just by being in a relationship in larger quantities, larger amounts. So when a person leaves or there's a breakup, these chemicals are not being secreted at the same level as they were prior to the breakup so post breakup there's going to be psychologically mentally this is why people go into depression this is why people you know uh sink into some kind of sadness this is why a lot of people uh turn to uh destructive behaviors to try to mimic replicate to get that dose back to where it was prior to the breakup so just being in a relationship th this is just this is I'm I'm talk, I'm speaking specifically to one biological, uh, the benefits the biological, uh, uh, the, the the there's a benefactor right <clears throat> both there's mutual benefactors right you guys are both providing the chemical advantage to each other so when there's a breakup these chemicals are no longer being released in the in the same dosage or amounts and as a result of that uh, the, the mood your moods. Your mood, the, 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 your mood begins to to change accordingly, proportionately, and this is why I say so. You naturally go into a negative state, and then obviously you gotta, you know, in time. Obviously, with time heals the wounds, and and you start to recover and you start to heal. But he, he, until then, in the meantime, is what I want to speak to you really quick about is that while you're in that state of fresh, you know, fresh out of a divorce, fresh out of a breakup. You want to be very conscious of your state. Be aware of your state. And the reason you need to be aware of your state is so that you're not, because at that point now, you're vulnerable, right? After the breakup, you're extremely vulnerable. Tell me I'm wrong. Girlfriends are going to call you. Girl, let's go out. Girl, I got a friend you need to meet. Fellas, your boys are going to call you. Yo, let's go to the club. Yo, let's go. 
go to some social event, some social gathering. Y'all got this girl I want to hook you up with. Y'all, uh, she's been checking you out. Da 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 da. Or, or this is my, this is this is the classical. This is the classical, and this is hands down facts right here, you, fellas. After the breakup, what do you do? Nine out of ten times, you go into your phone book. Right today, it's your phone. It's not phone book. Back in, I'm still thinking of 90s and 80s. You go into your, your cell phone and you start looking. You start going over all the old ex-girlfriends or females or just friends, right? With the so-called benefits. Ladies, y'all do the same thing, right? You start looking through your, your your phone decks. You start, okay, who who who's around? Who's single? Who's ready to mingle? You know who? This is what we do. The old the old fling, the guy that I used to sleep with. It was a strictly sexual. You start looking for that guy. The girl who I used to, you start looking for that girl, right? So immediately, immediately, you're, what we're doing, folks, by doing this is we're, we're putting ourselves, we're setting ourselves up, right? Because you're putting yourself, you're putting yourself in a, in a position for a downward trajectory, right? You start spiraling downward. The reason why is because if you're going into your phone, for instance, to pull up old flames or old flames or whatever, uh, you're going backwards. Immediately, you're going backwards. That's a backward uh, movement in life. It's a backward trajectory, right? So now you start going backwards and it, 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 it cascades, right? It, you know, think of the snowball effect. And then one thing leads to in your life. So this is why a lot of people are stuck. Right after relationships, a lot of people get stuck. Right, a lot, not all, but a lot of people get stuck in life, and flow becomes impeded and and and, and, and hindered your flow. Uh, so <clears throat> that's the worst thing you could do is try to go into another relationship or, or or not even a relationship, just a sexual relationship. A lot of people will say, "Oh, I'm just going to sleep with this person." Right, I'm just going to have a sexual. Uh, relation with this person. It's not. I'm not going to go deep. I'm not going to invest any emotion. I'm not gonna, but what you're what you're not realizing is you're still hindering, impeding, and blocking. Okay, blocking the universe from giving you what you really need. See, you're satisfying a want. That's what you're doing. When you say the instant gratification, like okay. I just broke up with this person. I got to find somebody to, 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 to fill that physical gap because that's all you're doing, right? I just want to put a Band-Aid on it, right? I just want to put some patchwork so I can keep going, right? What you're really doing, the, what you're not seeing, unseen and unbeknownst to you is you're actually, one, you're stopping the universe from sending you what you need by gratifying what you want, you see the difference? You see the distinction? So if if you if you if you're a person who values your, your your psychology, value yourself, that's not the best approach or direction to take after a breakup, after a divorce, or anything like that. Don't just jump to the net jump bed hop. Don't bed hop. Don't I hop and bed hop. You see what I'm saying? You bed hop, then you take an I hop. Don't I hop, bed hop. It just sounds cool. I don't know why I threw I hop in it. It doesn't matter. It just sounds like the right thing to say at the time, so I ran with it. It, 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 it rhymed with bed hopping, I hop. That's all. Uh, so don't 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 fall into the bed hopping, because it, it it's it's like I said, you're putting yourself in a position to downward spiral and to block. Even if you don't, the consequences ain't immediately right. You don't see the immediate consequence. The problem is you're stopping the universe from sending you what you need. And no man is an island. We all need the right person, not just any person. Any person won't do. For a man like me, if you have certain kind of standards, certain kind of values, and you, you got ambitions, just any person won't do. You, you see what I'm saying? Just satisfying, and this, and look, look we, we, hopefully we're all adults here who's watching this video. Let's just call a spade a spade. Satisfying your loins, okay, it, it just, it's, just, it's just purely uh, 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 a biological function. There is no other benefit to you other than that. Just getting a nut off. There is no other benefit to you than that. And if that's all you live for, if that's the only thing that's going to make you just going to drive you, that's all you live for, then you're not living. Because there is so much more that you are to accomplish in this world than just a sexual conquest. 
You see what I'm saying? There should be so much more aspiration, ambitions, goals, purposes that are, are more important and paramount than a, a, a sexual conquest. So my advice, you know, speaking from experience is that going through a divorce, going through any kind of breakups, the, you know, your best, your best bet is to ice, you know, they tell you not to isolate yourself and to be around people and don't know you should, I, I'm the contrary. I think your best bet should be self isolation for a period, not indefinitely, but you should do some isolation. And the reason being is because in isolation, you have time to do what's called, uh, self scrutinization so you can self scrutinize okay uh you can self in, in, introspect you can do some self introspection uh see where you went you know understand that listen everything in your life every monster whether the monsters a divorce whether the monsters are a breakup whether the monsters a custody battle whether the monsters a financial setback whatever the monster is in your life you have to take responsibility for the creation of that monster your choices led to that monster i've made some choices in my life that led to some monsters thank god none of my choices were fatalistic cuz i grew up with friends associates comrades if you will that have made choices that were fatalistic they're no longer here so if you make choices that are fatalistic, woe be unto you. That's it. It's over. Game over, right? You're dead. That's it. But if your choices have not been fatalistic and you're still alive, you have to own the monster that you've created by means of your choice. Cause your choice affect the monster. If you created the monster, that means you can uncreate the monster. If you're the reason for the creation of that monster, that means you can uncreate that said monster. But you must first own the responsibility of your choices because everything is a choice. We have to be conscious that we are making our choices and our choices have consequences that are either intended or un unintended, but either way, we must own them. So I do suggest that if you are going through a, a breakup, uh, you, you know, do, right now we're all quarantined. Do your own quarantine, self-quarantine, and take the time to really improve, work on you. It's not a time of guilt. There's no guilt involved. There's no beating yourself up. It's, it's more so taking the time to just improve upon yourself so that you can make better choices. You can make better choices about who you choose to let into your life. It's your life. And you do have a choice, a free will, but you have to, you know, again, it's trial and error. We're going to make mistakes, but we, we shouldn't continue to repeat the mistakes. A repeated mistakes mean the universe is telling you something and you're clearly not listening. So yeah, that's just a, a little bit of advice. It's a little 12 minutes. I wanted to keep it a little short, but I kind of went over. All right. Till next time, you know what I'm doing. Cooking books, bringing info. If you like the video, share it, leave a comment, whatever. Peace.